Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be rendering our scene to a cube map texture so that we can have reflective objects that actually reflect our in-game scene. So last time we had a look at reflection using environment maps but in that tutorial we were only using pre-made environment maps. If we want to be able to reflect our actual in-game scene we need to create an environment map of the scene and to do that we need to render our scene to a cube map texture. The way that we do this is actually pretty similar to what we've done before with rendering to a 2D texture because after all a cube map is basically just 6 2D images, one on each face. So to render to the cube map texture we render the scene 6 times, one time for each face, rotating the camera after each rendering so that each face has a different part of the scene rendered to it. When doing this we have to use a projection matrix with a 90 degrees field of view angle and then before rendering each face we rotate the camera 90 degrees so that the frustums match up perfectly with no overlap and we end up with 6 images of the scene that match up correctly basically making a full 3D image of the scene that we can then use as an environment map. So the concept is actually rather simple and nothing that we haven't covered already. We're just going to be using an FBO, attaching one of the faces as the colour buffer, rendering the scene to that, and then rotating the camera, attaching the next face as the FBO's colour buffer, and rendering to that, and so on for all six faces. So it's all pretty simple stuff, but there are a couple of issues that we have to consider. Firstly, we need to consider where we're going to be taking this 3D image of the scene from, because reflections using the resulting environment map will only be 100% correct at that one single point where the image was taken from. So for example, if I place the camera here when rendering to the cube map, then the reflections on this object will basically all be correct, but if this object here uses the same environment map, then the reflections are going to be slightly wrong, and the further away the reflective object is from the point where the environment map image was taken, the worse it gets. Obviously one solution would be to render an environment map for every single reflective object in the scene, but that would be pretty disastrous for performance in most cases. And that brings us on to the next issue, which is that rendering the scene six times each frame to create the environment map is obviously pretty awful and can quickly destroy the frame rate if you're not careful, so we definitely have to do something to make these renderings quicker. If you absolutely have to update your environment map every single frame, then you need to make sure to render as little as possible in the simplest way possible to the cube map. For example, only render the biggest and nearest objects like the terrain and big buildings, because little plants and grass and distant trees just aren't going to be noticeable in the reflection. Also, you need to render everything as simply as you possibly can, so don't use any normal maps, no shadows, no specular lighting, maybe even no diffuse lighting, or at least just per vertex. And obviously don't render any water with complex water shaders, and you might even want to consider rendering lower poly versions of your models with lower quality textures. I've actually put a link in the description to an article about how a frame is rendered in GTA 5, and you can see there how much they simplify the scene before rendering their environment map. Another option which is used by quite a few games is to pre-render environment maps for various different parts of the scene just once when the scene loads or maybe even pre-runtime, and then reflective objects in the scene can choose which ones to use depending on their position. This obviously has the big advantage of only rendering the environment maps once instead of every frame, and it works fine as long as the environment isn't changing too much. A similar technique to this was actually used in Doom, and you can find a link to an article about that in the description. But in this tutorial we can go even simpler than that, because I have just one reflective object in a completely static scene, so I'm just going to be rendering the environment map once when the game loads from this point here, and then the reflective model can always use that environment map. So that means that in the end, this whole reflective effect is actually super cheap. For this tutorial I've created a brand new example engine for us to test this out on, and you can download the code and resources for that in the description. You can either download the finished code for this tutorial and then just look through the code as I explain it, or alternatively you can download the starting code and then code along with me, whichever you prefer. So you'll just need to copy these three source folders into an Eclipse project that has the LWJGL, LWJGL utils, and PNG decoder jars added to the build path, along with the necessary natives, and then just refresh your project in Eclipse, and you might also have to indicate that these are also source folders by right-clicking on them, going to build path, and then clicking use as source folder.
So this engine is basically just a much simplified and tidier version of the usual tutorial code. And in terms of OpenGL stuff, there's absolutely nothing new in here. It's all just very basic rendering code, as you'll see. But I have structured a few things slightly differently, just so that you can have a look and see a slightly different way of approaching things. There are also a couple of extra features that you might be interested in, such as the smoother camera movement, or the much more compact way of dealing with uniform variables. But the thing that we're going to be most interested about this week is this here in the master renderer, where the scene is rendered to the screen. The shiny renderer is the renderer in charge of rendering the reflective objects in the scene, and it's basically using all the same code as we were using in the last tutorial. However, at the moment there's no environment map for it to use, and so it's currently just using the skybox's cube map instead, so you can see that in the game it's only reflecting the sky. So this week our task is of course to create an environment map for the shiny renderer to use by rendering our scene to a cube map texture. And just before we get into the code, if you're not already familiar with cube map textures, rendering to FBOs and environment mapping, then I definitely recommend that you watch my previous tutorials on those topics first, because I'm not going to be explaining those concepts much more in this video. So let's get started in the code, and we're going to be starting off this week in the scene class, which is a class that I created to contain all of the information about the in-game scene, such as all the entities, the water, the camera, the light, the sky, and we're now going to be adding in a cube map texture, which is going to be the environment map. And as you can see, I've created a class which can represent an, an OpenGL texture called texture. It's a very simple class, just basically holds the texture's ID. And we're going to initialize this environment map in the scene constructor, and we're going to just make it a completely empty cube map texture. And I've got a method for that, which needs to know the size of the cube map texture, the dimensions of one face of the cube map. And I'm going to keep that pretty low and set that to 128 by 128. Obviously, the lower it is, the more efficient it is to render. So let's just have a quick look at that create empty cube map method. Um, as you can see, it's all stuff we've done before in the cube map tutorial. I'm just generating a new texture, binding it as a cube map, then looping through all the faces. And for each face, I'm just creating an empty 2D image. And then I'm just setting some simple texture parameters like the filtering type and also clamping the edges so that we don't get any seams around the edges of the faces. So back in the scene class, we're now just going to create a getter method to get this cube map texture, which is acting as our environment map. So just create a quick getter method, which is just going to return the environment map. And we also need to go down to the delete method, which is used when the game is closed and the scene needs to be deleted. And we're going to delete that cube map texture. And as you can see, I've created a delete method in the texture class, which will do that for us. So we now just need to render our scene to that empty cube map texture. And we're going to be doing this in the environmap renderer class, which as you can see, has a static method already for us. And in this method, this is where we're going to be rendering the scene to the cube map. And first off, we're going to need a camera to do the rendering and I've created a class called cubemap camera which we'll have a look at in a second and the constructor for this takes in the position in the world where we're going to be taking this 3D image of the scene from. So let's have a quick look at this cubemap camera class. So this class represents the camera that's going to be taking the 3D image of our scene and as you can see it's in charge of the projection matrix and the view matrix that are going to be used for rendering the scene to the cube map. So the projection matrix is created first, and this is just created using the same code as we always use, but it has to use a field of view angle of 90 degrees, as I explained earlier, and also the aspect ratio that it uses is going to be one, because a face of a cube map is just a square, and a square, of course, has an aspect ratio of one to one. The view matrix is also created in the same way as usual, using the position and rotation of the camera, but the most important part of this class is the switch to face method, which turns the camera around to face the correct part of the scene, depending on which of the six faces of the cube map is going to be rendered to. So before rendering each face of the cube map, we're going to call this method, indicating which face is going to be rendered to, and that will turn the camera around to face the correct part of the scene, which will then get rendered to that face. So back in the environment map renderer, we're now going to want to create an FBO so that we can render to it. And to do that, we just have to call glgenFrameBuffers, and that returns the ID of the frame buffer object. And we're now going to bind the frame buffer so that we can do stuff to it. Um, so it's a GL frame buffer, and we need to put in the ID of the frame buffer. And we're now just going to indicate which is the color buffer 
of the frame buffer object and that for us is going to be GL color attachment zero. So whatever we attach to color attachment zero of this FBO is what's going to get rendered to. So now we need to add a few attachments to the FBO like we always do. So we're going to need a depth buffer and that's going to be a render buffer. So we're going to generate a new render buffer and get the ID of that. We're then going to bind it by calling GL bind render buffer and putting in the ID of the render buffer that we've just created. And we're now going to indicate what kind of information this render buffer is going to store and how big it's going to be. So it's going to be storing depth information because it's going to be a depth buffer. So we're going to put in here GL depth component 24. So it's a 24 bit depth buffer. And we now need to put in the width and height of the depth buffer. And that's going to be the same width and height as the cube map. Um, so that's going to be cube map size and cube map size because each uh, face is of course just a square. So the width and height are the same size. And we're now going to attach this depth buffer render buffer to the frame buffer by calling GL frame buffer render buffer. We need to attach it as the GL depth attachment. And we are going to be attaching a render buffer. And we now just need to put in the ID of that render buffer. So we're now going to be rendering to this FBO. We're going to be doing all of this in this method. So we need to prepare for rendering by calling the GL viewport method to indicate which part of this FBO's color buffer we're going to be rendering to. And we want to render to the whole thing. So bottom left is 0, 0 and and the width and height is the width and height of one face of the cube map. And we're now going to loop through each of the six faces of the cube map texture. And for each face, we're going to attach that face to the FBO as color attachment zero. We're then going to move the camera around to face the correct part of the scene. And we're then going to render that part of the scene to the FBO, which will render it to that face of the cube map. So for each face, we first want to attach the face to the frame buffer object as color attachment zero so that it can be rendered to. So we're going to do that by calling GL frame buffer texture 2D. We're going to be attaching it as color attachment zero. And we now need to put in which face of the cube map texture we want to attach as color attachment zero. And we can do that by putting in GL texture cube map positive X, which is the first face. And then if we put plus I, that means that each iteration, it will move on to the next face of the cube map. We also need to put in the cube maps ID, which is just cube map dot, uh, dot texture ID. And we also need to put in the mipmap level that we want to render to, which is just going to be zero. So this is going to loop through the six faces of the cube map. And for each face, it's going to attach the face as color attachment zero of the FBO. We can then move the camera around to face the correct part of the scene that we want to render by calling the camera dot switch to face method. And we're then going to render the scene to the FBO, which will render it to whichever face is currently attached to color attachment zero. And to render the scene, I'm using the render low quality scene method in my master renderer. And you must remember that before you render your scene, you need to clear the color buffer and especially the depth buffer. And you can see that I'm doing that in the prepare method. And you can also see that I'm only rendering the important, met uh, the important entities to the cube map texture, as I mentioned earlier. You want to keep this method as efficient as possible, especially if you're going to be rendering to the cube map texture every single frame. So once we've done that, the frame buffer has now done its job because the cube map texture is now full of information. So we can now unbind the frame buffer and um, we want to set the viewport back to what it was before. So the size of the viewport is now going to be the size of the display. So display.getWidth and display.getHeight. And if you're only going to be rendering to the cube map texture once, like I'm going to be doing as I load up the game, then you can now actually delete the frame buffer uh, by calling GL delete. Well, first we're going to delete the uh, depth buffer, which is a render buffer. So we're going to call GL delete render buffers and put in the depth buffer. And we can then delete the frame buffer by calling GL delete frame buffers. But obviously don't do this if you're going to be rendering to the frame buffer, if you're going to be rendering to the cube map every single frame. And so that is how you render the scene to a cube map texture. So now that we've done that, we need to add this functionality into the render engine. So I'm just going to create a method in the render engine class uh, called render environments map. And this is going to take in the cube map texture that we want to render the scene to. So it's going to take in the environment map, which will just be an empty cube map texture at this point. It's also going to take in the scene and also the position in the 3D world where we want to take this 3D image of the scene from. And this is just going to call the method that we just created. So that's render environment map that can put in the cube map texture, the scene, 
and it's also going to take in the master renderer so that we can actually render the scene to that FBO. So let's now go into the main class and in here we want to render the scene to the environment map just once when we load up the game. So we're going to call that method in the render engine. We're going to put in the environment map which we can get from the scene which is just going to be that empty cube map texture that we created. And the position in the world which we want to take this 3D image from is the position of the statue which I've placed at 0, 0, 0. So the center of that is going to be about 0, 2, 0. And the final thing we have to do is in the master renderer, the shiny renderer no longer needs to take in the skybox. It can now take in the actual environment map, which we will now have filled with a 3D image of our scene. And we can get that from scene.getEnvironmentMap. And if you go ahead and run that, hopefully your reflective object should now be using that environment map, which we created by rendering a 3D image of our scene to a cube map texture. And one final thing, if you want to try this out with a different model, then you can go into the resources res folder, go to the SOC1 scene, and then go into the entity list and just edit this second bit here. So change it from sphere to either the teapot model or also the statue model would work as well. So choose one of them, press save, and then just refresh your project in Eclipse. And then if you go ahead and run that, you should now have a different model which is reflecting your 3D scene. So that is going to be it for this week. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.